Today, we're going to be addressing the more and more relevant question of which is better, internal combustion engine cars or electric cars? Now, this video was produced in collaboration with the Learn Engineering YouTube channel, and he's going to be doing a bit more of the discussion on sort of the road car things, efficiency, stuff like that, whereas I'm going to focus more on my area of expertise, which is motorsport. There's quite a lot of benefits to electric cars when it comes to motorsports environments. Obviously, we have operational things like it's easier to deal with ever tightening noise restrictions and running in city circuits. And while I personally greatly prefer the visceral experience of a small block of metal containing thousands of tiny explosions, I'm a realist and believe that whatever helps the sport stay alive is best for it. In saying that, I'm going to try and provide a fair comparison of the two technologies as there are actually a lot of ways in which electrical vehicles are superior to internal combustion engine powers for racing purposes. The first thing that goes in favour of the combustion engine is weight, and this is a big one for racing. While electric motors themselves are fairly light, the battery packs that go with them are very heavy, especially in comparison to fuel tanks. This is primarily due to the current low energy density of battery packs, and while they are constantly improving, this graph shows how they are only following a linear growth trend. This is problematic as the current energy densities for lithium ion batteries are a bit over 200 watt hours a kilogram, compared to, you know, 12,000 watt hours a kilogram for gasoline. What does this mean? For the conceivable future, electric vehicles are going to be heavier than petrol vehicles for a given range. This is despite the improved energy efficiency of electric vehicles, both from more efficient drivetrains and from energy recovery through regenerative braking. So now that we have a car that must weigh more for a given level of energy storage, to even the field with a combustion car, we can run less total energy, but this becomes a problem as electric vehicles are very difficult to refuel quickly without a fuel cell. And this is how we end up with the car swapping situation in Formula E. So basically, we have to run heavier cars. Most people know that weight is bad for race cars, but why? If you have sufficient power, it won't slow you down in a straight line. Check out my video on power to weight for info on that. What it will do though, is cause two run on effects. One is that tires do not maintain a constant grip coefficient for a given vertical load. As you start to add more vertical load, the grip coefficient of a tire will decrease. This is known as normal load sensitivity. So your tires are working less efficiently. You can compensate for this by using a wider tire, but this makes suspension tuning harder and may force more significant compromises between straight line and cornering grip, as well as costing more for the individual parts. Check out my epically long tire video for more info on that. It also significantly increases the unsprung mass. The other big issue for electric race cars and heavy race cars is downforce performance. Now, your downforce to weight ratio should be constant for a given level of cornering grip. So as you increase the weight of your vehicle, you have to increase the downforce of your vehicle as well. This may be a problem because you may already be extracting as much downforce as you physically can from your current geometry. So you're gonna end up with worse cornering performance based on effectively a loss of downforce proportional to your vehicle mass. As such, heavier vehicles are always going to struggle in sort of higher end racing or downforce driven racing because their effective cornering grip will be lower. However, should we ever reach the scenario where electric and battery technologies become competitive with gasoline on a weight to weight basis, we have a few problems on our hand because there's actually a lot of benefits to running an electric drivetrain in a racing vehicle. As we were just talking aero, let's start there. Electric cars are more efficient. What does this mean for aero? Less heat produced for a given power level, which means less cooling. This allows us to package our car tighter and reduce the size of openings and exits. Consequently, we can reduce drag, improve downforce performance, which is a big plus. Electric batteries are divided into cells, and as such we can distribute them around the car as aero or mechanical team see fit. This will allow us to run them super low in the chassis if we want, so we could look for a lower CG of the car. The motors themselves are quite compact, so packaging will be a breeze. Although we may have to rethink the whole stressed gearbox layout most single seaters use, depending on if we now want to lay out the engine differently. Personally, I think gearboxes are going to stay in motorsport, as most electric motors do have defined torque drop off, power peak, and max RPM, even if they do have a very wide power band. And I think we'll get to see a really cool divide of either people choosing to go gearbox or no gearbox, sort of weighing out that compromise between do we go for harnessing that peak power and getting the max RPM to run out, 
or do we more sort of look at the efficiency gains of not having multiple gearing as well as the weight and packaging savings of just running a single gear? So that divide will add some variety into the sport that will be really welcome. Speaking of the gearbox, let's talk shock and vibration management because this is a big part of the electric car's benefits. As recently as this year, we've seen McLaren and Honda struggle for issues with vibration in their engine, so it's clearly still a thing. With electric motors, they don't have reciprocating components like a combustion engine, they have less moving components in general. So vibrations are minimal unless you really screw up, and you've also got less moving components, which means greater reliability in general. There's a huge amount to be said for shock management, particularly in off-road race cars, which have a nice tendency to blow gearboxes. Theoretically, it is possible to have a direct drive electric motor, which could stop gearboxes being crunched as they simply don't exist. But even for currently existing single speeds, it's much easier to reinforce a single gear set than an entire gear stack and differential. You also remove the need for the clutch as you have full torque at zero RPM so you can start straight up, and you solve the issues that, say, Kobayashi had in Le Mans earlier this year. In addition to this, electric motors have super precise control of wheel speed and torque. This means you can stop the spool up of wheels in midair, preventing shock loads upon hitting back on the ground. It's also an area where they're a great idea for track cars, as the response of track bias, stability and traction control systems can be tuned really effectively in electric setups, instead of sometimes terrible fuel and spark cut systems on combustion cars. This level of precision opens up another field, torque vectoring. Now, of course, you can get torque vectoring diffs on regular combustion cars, or you can achieve sort of ghetto torque vectoring by just applying the brakes to the wheel that you're trying to pull torque off. But it's not as effective as an electric motor with an electric motor for each wheel, where you can have that torque be partitioned off, drive each wheel, and you can apply negative torque on an electric motor. You have instantaneous torque response to the torque demand. You don't have power sapping like the brake torque biasing scenarios and you lose a lot of the cost, weight, and complexity associated with a conventional torque vectoring differential. This helps a lot in transient scenarios such as turn-in and corner exit, where you have to control the your acceleration behavior of the car effectively. So basically, electric-powered cars will be vastly superior to internal combustion engine cars on the racetrack, uh, but due to the current weight penalty, I'm not sure how far off that is in the future. So I can't give you an estimate there. And you can sleep easy right now if you're a fan of the combustion engine, because I think it's gonna be quite some time before they catch up on that weight. But once they do catch up on that weight, you're in a spot of bother. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel for more. And go over to Learn Engineering to check out the video I helped him on, on what's better for road use, electric or petrol. Leave a comment below on what you want to see next, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.